Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about some go-to veggies that I use for feeding my dogs. Now I'm sorry if there's some noise in this video. It is over 100 degrees outside, so I'm not going to turn my air conditioner off. Uh, so there might be a little bit of background noise during the video. So mainly I'm going to be talking about different types of vegetables and why I feed them. So for more information on raw diets for dogs, be sure to subscribe to my channel. And you can also follow me over on TikTok and Instagram. I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, WeKurt. They provided me with an ultrasonic air humidifier, which I've really been enjoying. This humidifier was designed in California to improve air quality in your home. It actually has a UV sterilized bulb to kill bacteria. It has a remote control, but better than that, it actually has Wi-Fi that you can control it from, and this actually does hook up to Alexa. It has a one to 12 hour timer, it also has an essential oil diffuser, and it holds 5 liters or 1.3 gallons. So this is made for about a 500 square foot room. It will mist for at least 24 hours straight and then will turn off when it is empty. And it's BPA free. I use it in my office, which is also my plant room. It's been great at keeping my plants humid. I also recommend it for reptile rooms or just any room. I'll link all the information down below. My dogs eat a raw diet, meaning that they do not get any kibble. I have a video of what I feed my dogs throughout the week, so I'll leave that link below. My dogs eat raw meats such as beef, chicken, pork, fish, turkey, and sheep or goat meat when I can get it. They also eat cooked grains like oats, rice, couscous, as well as potatoes. Why do I feed grains? Well, one, because dogs are not wolves. Two, predators actually do eat the prey's gut that contains seeds and grains. All that you can see in my feeding video. Now, one thing that I do do differently since I uploaded that is that I stopped adding a vitamin supplement to their food and instead I use pureed veggies. Not all my dogs will eat vegetables, so I do blend it so that they can't spit it out. So today I'm going to be talking about veggies that I use when meal prepping for my dogs. Real food is always better than any kind of supplements or vitamins so that you can give them good nutrition through real food. That's the best thing you can feed. Now I do have a list to go over the different types of vegetables I have because it is hard to remember every single one and the different things that they uh, help with and the different benefits that they provide. So I don't want to mess that up. So I'm going to actually just go over my list. And first we're going to start off with basil. Uh, basil right out of my garden actually. And so basil treats inflammation, swelling, has calcium and vitamin K, antioxidants, promotes liver health, reduces high blood pressure, and helps with anxiety and digestion health. So this is actually something I really like to um, add to their food. Some of my dogs do suffer from allergies, so they do get inflammation and things like that from the allergies. So I like to add basil and then also it's great for digestive health, which if you have dogs, they put everything in their mouth and they always have an upset stomach. So this is helpful. Basil, of course, is actually really easy to find in the grocery store. It's easy to grow. Definitely recommend growing it because it's great for so many recipes. Uh, but yeah, it's um, something you can add to your dog's food. Now, I would not add a lot. Um, I might add this entire thing, but it's six dogs and it's going to uh, be fed over probably 10, a 10 day period because uh, that's how I kind of space out the food. So uh, yeah, a little bit goes a long way so you don't really need a lot. Next is yucca root and yucca root is actually a root that comes off a cactus that grows around this area. There are a lot of benefits uh, from yucca root which include uh, it's used for arthritis, high blood pressure, migraine headaches, inflammation of the intestines, high cholesterol, stomach disorders, and diabetes. Now one thing about this is that it is actually a natural detoxer and so it is used to help with odor control. So you'll sometimes find yucca extract um, like in small pet food or things like that because it does help with the smell of urine, but it is completely safe for your pets. So um, this is a really great thing to add to your dog's diet, especially when they do have allergies and they do give off a certain smell from that, that can help cut that back. 
and I also just really like this because it is so great for the digestion and all of that. Besides that, it's actually used as a topical treatment to treat wounds and it can also be used for hair loss. Uh, some other benefits from it is that it does contain protein, fiber, it's high in calcium and potassium, vitamin C and A. Now this is also high in calories, so if you have a skinny dog, this would really help to put weight on them. If you have some dogs that uh, are a little too much weight already or you don't want them gaining weight, then just use it in small amounts, but this is great. And I'm going to show you how to prepare it actually. Uh, so basically you're just going to want to cut off um, each end of it and then you can you know, put it in a couple of pieces just because that'll make it easier to handle and you want to trim the bark off of it until you just have the white part left. Now, if you are interested in yuca, or if you've never had it, I actually have a recipe on how to make it for humans, because um, there's not too much taste to it, so you do want to add like some herbs and butter and stuff like that. Uh, you can think of yuca as a potato substitute. And then next is beets, and these are some of my favorite go-to vegetables because I use them for a lot of my animals. This is really good for your birds, your small animals, your dogs, so um, and then the tops are of course also good for your small animals too, like your rabbits and your guinea pigs, so uh, even your reptiles. This goes a long way, it can be fed to so many animals. And the benefits from beets is that it helps create red blood cells and energy, it's good for heart health, improves blood flow, prevents muscle fatigue, vitamins A, C, and K, and B2, full of antioxidants, anti-inflammatory, and high in fiber. So this is an awesome thing to include in your pet's diet. Now beets are the only vegetable that I do cook uh, when I'm feeding it to the dogs just because I like to boil it and then blend it up into their food. Makes it a little bit softer, easier to blend, and also just uh, releases a lot of that good nutrition. But I don't throw away the juice from it after it's done boiling. I use that for uh, rice or something else that I'm going to make so that the dogs can still get some of that benefit. Oh, something I forgot to add when it comes to beets is that don't forget this can be a choking hazard. So if you do feed it raw, you need to uh, shred it, cut it up for your pets. And also it is super red. It turns everything else red. It'll turn your chop red. It'll turn, you know, the rest of your veggie mix red and it's going to make your animals have red poop. So don't be alarmed when your pets start having bright red poop after they've eaten this. That's perfectly normal. Next is cauliflower, the perfect rice substitute uh, for you or your pet that is allergic to uh, grains or things like that. Cauliflower is a great rice substitute and some of the benefits from it is that it has vitamin C, K, B6, high in fiber, helps with inflammation, has antioxidants, helps with brain and liver health, benefits your thyroid gland, and is ranked in the 25 powerhouse fruits and vegetables for the Center of Disease Control. So cauliflower, it has a lot. And next is bell peppers. Now I use a lot of bell peppers. You can use all colors. Uh, they're not spicy, so even you know orange, yellow, red. Uh, red's actually supposed to have even more health benefits than just green. So you can use all different types of bell peppers. I like to try to change it up for my animals and also use it as a source of color, especially for like parrots and stuff. But dog video, I'm trying to focus on that. So typically I'll use like the green for the dogs, but you can use um, other ones as well. The benefits are that it has vitamin A, C, B6, and that's for mental health. Uh, vitamin E, folic acid, fiber, potassium, antioxidants, and it's great for eye health as well as helps lower cholesterol. So bell peppers are a great thing to add to. And then next we have another herb out of my garden and this is mint. So uh, mint is really great for a lot of things. Um, you'll see it most often for the way the dog's breath smells. That's what it's commonly used for. Uh, but it does have other benefits as well. So besides um, the smelly breath, and the reason for this, it kills smelly breath is because it kills bacteria. So it's kind of more important than the odor is that you do want to be killing the bacteria because that's one of the leading causes of death in dogs is dental disease. So it helps with digestion, uh, symptoms like stomach pain, gas, upset stomach, and indigestion, bloating, 
helps relieve anxiety, and helps with a cold. So a lot of benefits to mint, and that's something else that I like to include in their diet. Now again, it's an herb, so a little goes a long way. Um, I probably wouldn't put this much, but in one batch. Um, but yeah, it's another really good herb. Now we're going with kale and spinach. The two scary vegetables. Next are two veggies that really freak out pet owners. From dogs to bearded dragons to guinea pigs, people are scared to feed kale and spinach. Now there are real concerns with the risks that come from eating too much of these plants. Both can cause kidney stones and joint problems. Spinach makes it more difficult to absorb calcium. But it's important to remember that anything in excess is bad for you and you can still get great health benefits out of these leafy greens for your pets. It just takes moderation. So some of the benefits you do get from kale is uh, vitamin A. It's one of the best sources of vitamin K, C, B6. It's an antioxidant, lowers cholesterol. It's good for eye health, lowers blood sugar, uh, lowers blood pressure, high in calcium, and it's good for uh, skin and nails. Now, the other scary vegetable, spinach. Spinach is a great source of fiber that helps with constipation. Uh, vitamins A, C, K1, folic acid. It's a good source of iron and it's good for eye health because its components help with uh, preventing muscular degeneration and cataracts. It also has vitamin K, which helps with blood clotting. And then of course bananas. Bananas are a great source of potassium. I think that's what they're the most known for. Antioxidants, vitamin C, supports heart health, lowers cholesterol, lowers blood sugar, high in fiber, used to treat diarrhea, improves bloating, gas, and stomach cramps. So uh, bananas really good for your dogs that are having um, any type of digestive problems where they're having a lot of diarrhea and just upset stomach. So, Keep that in mind for your dogs. Oh, and if you're worried about not giving your dogs too much sugar, banana is actually a good fruit for that because it's actually not that high in sugar and it's recommended for diabetics to eat, I think, half a banana a day. And then we have a superfood, blueberries. And blueberries are a great thing to add to your dog's food. Also great to add to like snacks or treats or things like that that you're making for them and has a lot of benefits. So it's the uh, highest levels of antioxidants. Uh, so higher than most fruits and vegetables. Reduce uh, DNA damage to protect against aging and cancer. Good for heart health. Reduces high blood pressure, prevents heart disease, and may help with brain function and memory. It also helps fight against UTIs and helps with muscle soreness from exercise. So if you do have a very active dog, then add blueberries. And then celery. And some people might say, well, that's not a great option because it's so watery. It does have a lot of water, but it does have some benefits too and can actually help your dog with digestive health. So celery helps with hydration, anti-inflammatory, helps with an irritated stomach, constipation and as a detox for the body. So still a lot of benefits even though it is so watery. And then lastly, I actually don't have one right now, but zucchini. And I didn't want to leave it off the list because this is actually another really great one. Uh, zucchini is a great source of potassium, uh, phosphorus, fiber, vitamin C, B6, A, E, and K, and has sodium, zinc, and iron. Helps manage glucose, good for dogs that need to lose weight, because it is low in calories and it does make you feel full. So especially for those dogs that have diabetes related, um, heart conditions, helps with urinary tract infections and uh, benefits colon health. So zucchini does have a ton of benefits. So I didn't wanna leave that one out. That is one of the ones that I also do use pretty often. And that's my main list when it comes to providing vegetables into your dog's diet. And it's not a complete list. There's tons of other vegetables and fruits that you can add to your dog's diet that have tons of benefits. But I think this is a pretty good list, especially for anybody getting started that um, you know isn't used to feeding their dogs vegetables. And if you have a picky dog, all you need to do is puree all of this, then mix it into their food. They won't be able to throw it out. 
So that's kind of how you get around that because yeah, a lot of these things my dogs would not eat willingly. Now since I've gone over this list, I'm actually going to pick out a few of these ingredients to make a veggie blend for my dogs for the week. And I'm gonna post that over on TikTok, so please go watch over there. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!